In the previous video, we looked at the list iterator interface and its different methods. Two methods that weren't covered in depth were hasNext and hasPrevious. And so inside of this video, we're going to look at these two. And we're also going to look at the interaction between list iterator and loops. The first thing you must do when using a list iterator is to import it from the util package. What I've done here is created an array list with integers inside of it, and that's 15, 22, 19, and 99. And then down here, I've created my list iterator. I've used type parameters right here, saying that the underlying data structure has integers inside of it. And then I've constructed it using the name of the array list and then list iterator method. The first loop here uses the method hasNext. And what hasNext is a Boolean method that looks at, is there something next in the underlying data structure? Or have we reached the end of the data structure? Which then it would return false and end the loop. Here.next is going to get that next element. It's going to move the iterator and then get the preceding element before it. I've then done a system out print line just to create a line between the two. And then I have has previous. What has previous is going to pick up where the iterator was left off in the last loop, and it's going to go backwards through the underlying data structure. And it says, is there something behind it? Yes. And then previous is going to return whatever item that is. And then by putting it in a system out print statement, it's going to print that out. So let's go ahead and run and compile this. And you'll see the first loop prints out 15, 22, 19, 99. So it goes forward through the array list. Then, as I said earlier, the list iterator is left at the end of the data structure. And then it goes backwards through the array list. So I go 99, 19, 22, and 15. So I'm going backwards through the array list. In this next program, I wanted to show you an implementation using for loops. And you might think that this is an odd implementation because it's missing both the first and ending parameter. And for loops allow for this syntax. They allow for you to leave out any portion that you would like of the three major sections of a for loop. But if you notice, this right here is exactly the same condition that I have in my while loop. So I'm really writing a while loop, but making it look like a for loop or using for loop syntax. So these do exactly the same thing. They go all the way to the end of the underlying data structure and print out all the values, and then goes backwards through the same underlying data structure, which is an array list, and prints out the values in there. Remember, one of the main features of a list iterator is that it can do exactly that, go backwards. Iterators cannot go backwards in their underlying data structure, but list iterators can. Loops are an obvious way to use iterators to go through an underlying data structure. And I've shown you the two implementations, both a for loop and a while loop.